Okay, I'm going to run uh, the video on this live uh, trade, and to try to keep it short, I'm going to put it on pause whenever there's not much price action. But just as an explanation of the chart, I've got the um, I've got my cloud of EMAs here. This dark I don't know what you'd call that kind of a salmon color. <clears throat> and this was a good uh, uh, entry short up here. I had taken some of that, but got out I think when it uh, just shortly after the open. And you can see the vertical lines and the stop would have just been above that swing high right there. So your your risk your risk to reward would be a great uh, a great trade. And um, I'm hoping we can get this price down here to this level right here. This is uh, so you can see the cloud of the, my two EMAs, and here's my long, here's my long EMA, my medium, and my short. And uh, then I also have the uh, anchored VWAP, which is the magenta. And then I have the first and second standard deviation lines, both upper and lower. Here's the second uh, devi deviation line lower here. And it uh, was riding it, you know, as it often does. And uh, uh, what else do I have here? Oh, my uh, candle colors. Um, you can see that... Uh, Really, from this, if if you had entered here, uh, one uh, clue to get out would be to have three back-to-back -back green candles. And I've had only two here, and nowhere so far have I had three back-to-back. -back. So if you had entered here on my vertical uh, dark red line, uh, you'd still be in here if you were following my uh, candle exit strategy. And so uh, this looks like a bunch of birds sitting on a telephone wire right here. Um, and it's uh, 10.43 a.m. on the 22nd of December. And we've got a little bit of snow here today in Virginia, having just moved from Florida. 20 years living on the water down there. Okay, there's a green candle right there. And this is a two-minute chart. So I'm going to put this on. Uh, I'll put this on pause so as not to chew up too much of your time. And I'll come back if something significant happens. Okay, I exited all three contracts right here. Uh, took about eight hundred dollars profit as it pulled up here. I've got two green separated but i've got two green candles it's right up here at the my uh, fastest ema which is at the bottom of this salmon color cloud and i could always re-enter um, i'm not sure if this was putting a base in here or not i mean i guess it did put a base in it, but i'm not sure what price wants to do with it you can see our money flow has popped above the zero line. That's another reason I was encouraged to kill that trade. Uh, by the way, this um, this dotted line here, uh, I think it's dark red. That is uh, the VWAP that originated at the Asian Open. That's your tra tra traditional uh, standard VWAP starting time. Whereas this anchored VWAP is anchored right here at the New York Open. <clears throat> and additionally, the, um, the blue dash dot dot line is the midpoint between the high and low since last night's Asian Open. That's a midpoint line. We could get a vertical <clears throat> dark red line here, which would suggest uh, an entry short. Not much of a bearish flag here. I like, usually like to see that pull back further. OK, 
Okay, I'm going to put this on pause again. I'm trying to keep this uh, as short as I can. Okay, I got a red vertical line and entered uh, re-entered short. Order submitted. Order submitted. Honey, does it look like our snow stopped? What, honey? Looks like our snow stopped, huh? Yeah. No, I guess you heard me yell to my wife that the snow stopped. I forgot I was recording. So I guess that makes this a family show. Okay, I'm going to put this on pause. We're at eight minutes. <clears throat> Here's a decision point that you'd have to make. Now, I had three green candles in a row, which is a, typically an exit uh, sign. But I also had my stop above this recent swing high. So I elected to stay in it and, uh, and suffer the loss if it did hit my uh, stop up there. So, so far, it's worked out to my advantage. It's 11, 12, 12 minutes after 11 on the 22nd of December. This 38.30 level has been just uh, hanging on. All right, I guess I could put it back on pause again if it's not going to move for now. I'll come back if something helpful or interesting develops. Okay, uh, I've been out for about a half hour shoveling snow. 
So I'm sitting here rather hot and sweaty, but you can see what happened. It did not hit our stop above the swing high, but it's reached down here uh, probably somewhere around $1,500 and did pull back a tad. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm still seeing if we can get down here to this target. <sighs> Didn't have a lot of snow, but it's supposed to get down to 7 degrees. And I remember one year in Pennsylvania that it froze. I think it was in, I don't know, late January, early February. And it froze on the road in ruts, deep ruts. And I don't think it thawed until late March. So I hate to have this stuff just sit there. And then turn into really difficult driveway and walks and so forth. Come on, let's get down. What time is it? It's 12.13. Usually I like to be done by 12.20. You know, I'm watching the London close up. The London session. And just oftentimes just kind of gully lags around until about 2.15 or so. At least, at least in my observation. like to catch this trade here for the room if I can with a still shot. You can see that I'm currently sitting there with two uh, buy orders to cover two of the three shorts thinking maybe I'd let the next one go as a runner and this this is standard deviation number two right here this line this gray line so I might even take it down I might even go down to the standard deviation two that's beyond my two to one target so hopefully I don't regret that Get this set up there. You can see my money flow is coming below the zero line, pretty flat on my volume, indecisive there, which isn't a surprise because of all this chop right in here. Okay, we're up to uh, 13, 14 minutes on this video. I think not knowing what this is, when this is going to make a move, one way or the other, I'm going to put this on pause again. Maybe, uh, just don't want to burn up too much of your time. Okay, you can see it's making a new recent low here. You can see I've got 3,100 bias to the short volume 27 2800 to the long so it's starting to show a little bit of favor at the bottom to the short side and it's 1218 i didn't put you on pause long because i saw this starting to give me a new low here didn't know whether it was going to break out or not but we got good signs of it. as you can see the volume red line is is arcing up and the green arcing down and our money flow is below the zero line, staging down there.
this line right here is just the two to one reward versus the risk up there. Probably bring my stop down to here, but it, you know, I hate to be shaken out of trades. I won't let this go to a loss now, that's for sure. So I might as well bring this down. I just hate to see all that pro profit erode. And once again, I did get three straight green candles, but you know my stop was up over at that swing high, so I thought I would let it continue. No magic to it, isn't there? As much for me, there's as much guessing as there is any unnatural knowledge. Okay, I'm going to put this on pause again. We're up to 16 minutes. Okay, I'm back again. I just uh, I wanted to show this uh, building bias uh, short volume right here. It's at 30, almost 3,800 versus 2,900 roughly. Must turn out to be a nice trade. Wouldn't I be sick if it hits my two to one target and then bounces off just shy of that lower standard deviation number two? You know what I might do? I just might take two of those off. Oops. Let's see, what am I doing here? Oh, I gotta I have myself limited to the number of Okay, we're down to two. Take that down to one. Order filled. Now, let me get this, got to get that down to one. Okay, so now we've bankrolled some of that profit. And we'll just see if this comes down to this standard deviation number two down here. That's a favored target of the professional traders. And professional traders get bonused for how close they can get into a trade in the right direction, how close to the VWAP. They're actually bonused on that. So, um, you know, the standard uh, VWAP was right here, this dotted black line. So if they had gotten short way back up there real close and went short close to that VWAP, the standard one that originated at the uh, Asian Open, well, here it goes, maybe. I wanted to catch that for the room, the static. I think that's 20. Come on, you, you're going to do it. There's that standard. Come on. There we go. There we go. Okay, I want to get this one last chart up under the uh, new field. I appreciate Casey making that room just for futures. All right, so there we are. There we are. Okay, I better take off my stop, right? Okay, so I'm going to... I'm going to shut this down. We're up uh, almost 20 minutes, so. Now you can see, here's some more red vertical lines right here, right? So if you had drawn a, a, bullet, a bearish, uh, um, help me out here, bullish 
uh, uh, not handle, <laughs> Polish flag. I got it. And let me hit the control B, move this up here about like so. So in this case, uh, we had a break below right here with a, I should say, a, our vertical line. And that would have put you in a nice trade right there. So I think these vertical lines are going to be good. Now, now these are, of course, just for shorts. And I have it set up that I'll only go short if my higher, my slowest, uh, my slowest EMA is sloping down. So the only time I'll get a, I hear this is a crazy time to trade. This is midnight around there, so I wouldn't be trading there. Well, let me see if I can show you. Let's go back where there's a, a clear uptrend. Well, here's one. See this? See this green? So there would be a that would be a signal to get in right there and right up to well what turned out to be a shooting star right there which was a beautiful beautiful call there's another one right there a green I should say a green vertical line so it's a you know I think there's some legs to this uh, and as you've already gathered you know one of my greatest enjoyments is messing around with charts and building stuff so that's the reason you'll see things change I'm not very consistent. Because for me, the reward is probably largely the creative, the creative aspect of it. Okay, I'm going to shut this down.